I'm here today with uh, Sebastian Ziaia, a dear colleague from the German Development Institute, working on democracy promotion and fragile states. Welcome, Sebastian. Thank you very much. Uh, you recently won the award for the best paper presented at the 2013 joint sessions uh, of the European Consortium for Political Research. Congratulations. Uh, the paper is entitled Diversity Trumps Quantity, Types of Foreign Aid, Donor Fragmentation and Democratization. What is its main message? Well, the main message is that it can be good for democracy when development aid is provided by a large number of donors. This contradicts the conventional wisdom that um, aid provided by a large number of donors, which is commonly referred to as um, aid fragmentation, has exclusively negative effects on the recipient country. Yeah, that is quite surprising. And uh, how would you explain uh, the positive effects on democracy? Yeah. Well, here we have to distinguish two different types of aid, uh, democracy aid and general aid. Democracy aid is aimed at reforming institutions and at supporting civil society. General aid is aimed at um, designing and funding um, economic policies. Now, when uh, general aid is fragmented, we have um, problems in the recipient country because lots of uh, donor agencies are trying to work with the recipient government administration and they are overburdening this administration. In democracy aid, this problem is much reduced because we have many more actors uh, on the recipient side. We have non-governmental organizations, political parties and so on. Uh, but, uh, which is more important, is that the diversity on the donor side uh, has, has direct benefits for for the recipient country, because um, this diversity enables more actors in the recipient country to find a fitting support from the outside. And this, in the long run, improves democracy. Um, this creates a market for democracy, so to say. Now, what used to happen in the past often is that um, donors try to impose um, a, a blueprint onto an institutional blueprint onto the recipient country. Um, and this uh, often failed because um, uh, democracy is a very um, uh, difficult thing to plan in advance. We have to find out with trial and error which works best. Yeah, and so there is no one size fits all. And uh, how would you say are your results? How reliable are they? Well, my analysis is based on a um, big data set of across country um, uh, indicators ranging from 1990 to 2008 and uh, it is supported by some anecdotal case study evidence in Ghana. Um, so the relationship between the number of donors and improvements in democracy is very clear. I can say that but um, in the future it would be nice to better um, find out how the mechanism exactly works, how diversity on the donor side translate translates into better democracy on the recipient side. Yeah, that brings me to my last question. Uh, what are the lessons learned uh, for development policy uh, from your paper? Well, first I would say the most important lesson is we have to be more critical of um, calls for reducing uh, donor fragmentation because we see that in some instances here in democracy aid and democratization it is beneficial to have diversity, to have, to have different uh, donors present in the recipient country. At the same time, we should be uh, less hesitant of um, um, promoting uh, participation and of promoting mobilization. In the past, we often relied on elite pacts. And um, these, in the end, as we can see, for example, in the Ukraine at the moment, don't turn out to be very stable. Thank you for these insights in your paper, Sebastian. And of course, you can find out more about our work on democracy promotion and fragile states on our website. And so thank you again, Sebastian Ciaia. Thank you very much.